I call it teaching in three dimensions. I did have a short stint teaching high school history and at, right out of college and didn't feel that I knew what to do teaching from a book, teaching history from a book. I had some fun with literature, but teaching history from a book um, did not come easily to me. I think there are some teachers who know how to do that, and some of us don't. I had to have props. I had to have things. Um, and so my whole museum career uh, related to education, working with children and working with teachers, has always, always been focused on how do we use um, objects of everyday life, works of art, architecture, monuments, any, anything that has been made or used by a human being is um, fair game in my book. So uh, I usually begin any class on what is history with an object. And I try to find a mystery object, something that my students, no matter what their age, might not have ever seen. And I do this on purpose because I want to demonstrate first and foremost how difficult it is to understand history when you take a nugget of information out of context. It's very hard to understand something that you've had no experience with. Uh, so, you know, if a teacher would walk into a classroom one day, say she's going to teach pioneer life, and she immediately says to her students, imagine being a pioneer. The students have nothing with which to spark their imagination. But if that same teacher walked into her classroom and she had a, a straw hat and she had a, um, a cow horn cup and she had a, a wooden bowl, a candlestick, et cetera, et cetera, and then she tried to get her students to imagine being a pioneer because the, and these are the things that a pioneer would, would wear, use, or make, et cetera, then we're getting somewhere, I think, because we're building on experience. 